because we want to do like I said composite of hair like in three different positions in the frame. building our set for today's video but I just wanted to quickly walk you guys through what we are doing. I have a canvas backdrop you know that is going to be our main backdrop and I'm going to drape some fabric on these random items and that's a cool thing about doing studio shoots you can hide certain things that people will not even think about and it's going to help you create interesting looking images. I have these two stools that I have in my living room I'm sure you have something similar that you can use. I have this power bank um, it's sturdy enough and I like the height just so it can, you know, serve as a little prop for my subject. She can just put her feet on, just going to add a bit of, you know, variety to the shots. We have a stool and then actually I'm using my Godox AD200 in a cone also as a prop. And like I said, all I want to do is create ridges just to add like variety and interest and make the shot a little bit more dynamic. So what I'm gonna do, first of all, because this is a larger fabric, I'm just gonna drape this in our scene. I feel lighting is very important when it comes to photography. That is the main thing that's going to help you capture your images. And for this, I'm trying to use a very simple lighting technique. We're using hard modifiers, smaller light sources than I normally use. And so I'm gonna show you what those modifiers look like and what each light is doing because we're using a total of three lights for this particular shoot. This is our main light actually. This is what is supposed to set the entire mood and all the other lights are just helpers, right? Typically, when you're lighting with your main light, you'd always want it to be in front and to light up your subject. But like I said, we want to create a very moody scene. And so I don't want this to be directly towards my subject. I want it to come from the side. And by so doing, we're going to have some shadows fall on the opposite side. We will tackle the shadows a little bit with these other lights that we're going to add. But I want to show you that this light is just made a little bit softer uh, because of this diffusion that we have on there. I have the 35 degree deep focus reflector from Westcott. And so if I draw a straight line through, right, what this light is supposed to do is just travel across to a subject and then light half of the scene. Our first light, which is actually in group A, and this is in group B because our second light. I also have a small seven inch reflector attached to it. And what it's supposed to do is just bounce off a wall, create a very large light source, uh, fill our frame, and then reduce the depth of the shadows that we are creating. Remember I said our first light is already angled in such a way that we'll be creating hard textural light on our subject, but we just don't want it to go too dark. And so we are using our second light, bounce off a wall, create a large surface, fill the entire space, and then reduce the shadows that we're getting in our scene. Now we're moving on to our third light, which is a simple speed light that is aimed down, is bouncing into a reflector. And what it's doing is just lifting up any shadows from underneath so we get a little bit of specularity in our shots. So that is what um, all these three lights are supposed to be doing together. I'll start taking the shots one after the other so you can see exactly what uh, each light is doing and then I also take all of them together and then you see how they interact in the scene and give us um, the exposure that we are looking for as well. All right, so one important piece of what we are doing today is because we're going to be compositing um, three versions of hair together into one shot, it means that our camera angle, the height, everything has to stay consistent. And the only way you can lock it in is by placing your camera on a tripod. So any sturdy tripod that you have should be able to do this job. I also want you to be able to see exactly your camera settings I'm using and how the light is also affecting the shot. So I'm going to be recording my camera screen so you guys will be able to see and follow along. My camera settings are one over 100 on the shutter speed 
And the reason I can go this low is because I'm on a tripod again. So the camera isn't moving. She's also not really moving that much. And so shooting at one over 100 is really not going to add any motion blur in this case. I'm at f2.8 on aperture because I want to add a little bit of depth in the shot. And I'm also at ISO 50 or L if you're using a Canon. And this is also just to allow more mood. Um, into the scene, kill a lot of the ambient light and stuff like that. So I'll start off by turning off my trigger and I'll just take a test shot. And as you can see, it's completely black. This means that we don't have this LED that I'm using to light the scene for you guys to see in the video uh, affecting the shot. And I'll turn the trigger back on. And right now we only have our main light going to fire. So actually, I think let's start. Okay, let's start with you sitting the way you are and we'll do a couple of variations um, of that middle shot as well. So, yeah, perfect, just look at me. Yeah, just look into the camera. Yeah, that's nice. Just, let's just take one more. Okay, so I'm gonna turn off the main light and then I will turn on the fill light and you guys will see what that is doing as well. I just took our fill light shot and as you can see, we're able to now see details um, in, her, in her dress. We can see a little bit more um, of our subject, a little bit of the fabric going on as well. And we have, you know, like a very large spread of light in the scene that is looking really, really good. I'm going to turn that off and then just turn on our last light, which is bouncing into the reflector. So you guys can see what that is doing as well. All right, so for our third light that is bouncing into the reflector, I'm going to take another shot. Yeah, so just, yeah, just like that and look into the camera. Okay. As you can see, we have a little bit of texture in her dress, um, a little bit in the crown and just a tiny bit on her as well. But it's, I mean, it's not making the image as dark as our first test shot where none of the lights went off. Okay, so now we have our group A, group B and group C light on. All three lights are on right now. I'm going to take a test shot again and then we'll see what a combination of all these lights uh, would give us. Perfect. Yeah, that's amazing. So as you can see, very nice. Now all we need to do is work with our model and capture a variety of shots. So the first shot is going to be of hair in the middle because we want to do like I said, composite of hair like in three different positions in the frame. The first one is going to be around here. So like what she's doing right now, sitting is fine. We'll do some variations of her standing just to see or just to get more a variety to choose from in post. We'd also make her sit somewhere here. And I feel like we can also make her lie and it will just create like a very interesting um, shot. So that's what we're going to be doing first. Once she's up there, we're going to try and capture a lot of shots of her sitting and then we'll make her stand and then just get variety as well. Yeah, that's it. Always tiptoe, don't forget. So both, yeah, even if you're crossing, you have to tiptoe. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, that's it. I like it. Yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah, I love these frames. One last shot. All right. Let's just do some of you now standing just to get more variation as well. Keep it. Chin up a little bit. Yeah. I actually like the when your leg also went out. Yeah, that's it. Perfect. And chin up and touch your head. Yeah. That's it. Relax your fingers. Yeah. Right there. Beautiful. Okay, so what I want you to do now is yeah, and then just stretch your legs out and lie more on your side. You can pull the dress a little bit higher so that we create more folds, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's it. Amazing. Yeah, I like that too. And then your chin up, yeah. Perfect. Maybe that hand, like just, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, perfect. Okay, nice. All right, so now we are doing our last uh, frame where we are positioning her a little bit more onto the right and she's sitting and then we'll be combining all these three shots. So over here as well, we're going to do the same thing where she's going to vary her poses. We'll just try and get a lot of variety and then we'll pick the best shots um, later on. So, ready? Okay. Yeah, I love that. I love that. I love that. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. Okay, so now let's, again, let's just do the same thing. Just be moving. Anytime the flash goes off, change your pose. Yeah, beautiful. Can I move this way? Yeah, you can. Yeah, that's it, that's it. Yeah, that's nice. That's cute. Beautiful. Yeah. Let's just do a few of those. Yeah, that's it. One last shot. 
No, 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 like what you're doing is fine. What you're doing is perfectly fine. One last shot. Okay. So jumping onto my screen, these are some of the images that I captured. So with hair setting, for example, this is the entire look. I was shooting really wide because I knew that I wanted to be able to capture everything and then remove the things that I don't need later on in post. So we started with hair setting, we made a stand, and then we also went further to make it lie down, you know, in certain areas, making sure that the shot is staying as still as possible. And then we also just grabbed a few of hair on the right hand side also playing with different poses because ideally i don't know what's really going to work and so just having more options makes it easier for me when i'm compositing so this is basically the general idea and some of the things that happen on set and then i also took some shots like some blank shots just in case i needed to be able to pick and use some of these elements during my composite all right so let me just hide all these layers and then walk you through what i did so in the beginning i chose an image that i liked and then on top of that i inserted the other images so this is what it looks like without the cutout using the layer mask and this is what it looks like when i cut it out of the layer mask again you will see that the selections are not really perfect because i know that there are several steps that we can take to enhance it so on top of that this is where i imported the last image of hair sitting on top and then again i also layer mask that so without the layer mask this is what it looks like and then with the layer mask this is what it looks like so now we've been able to bring all the different poses that we need into the shot and now we can begin to look at what is going to work for us versus what is not all right so the next thing i did was just to fill in these blank areas and also remove the reflector now on top of that i also just you know added a bit of the fabric down here because i felt like she was just lying on this very dark material and it wasn't really looking nice i just wanted a bit of this texture to flow through the entirety of the image and this also just makes sure that everything is a little bit more cohesive so by doing that it just made it look it just elevated the look a little bit more but because i imported it from an image where they were not present on it they were not casting any shadows on it and so you can see that the light was hitting it directly and because it's also a bit of a reflective material is looking really bright and it's not matching the rest of the scene so on top of that i just created the curves and darkened the curves down just to bring the exposure down and i also just clipped it onto that so that it's not affecting the entire image just this area which is the material that i imported and it looks really amazing now on top of that i just wanted to darken the corners around so that our eyes just travel to the center you know drawing our attention to what is happening in the middle of the frame so just by darkening the corners it just brings more shape and attention to the image all right so now the next thing is me just playing with the contrast of light i wanted to darken the background and also just lighten my subject a little bit so inside the folder i did create a layer mask two of them on curves adjustment so one curves is bright one curves is dark just like what you will do for dodging and burning but if i hide this one for example all this is doing is darkening the canvas backdrop just adding more depth and helping me separate my subject from the background even more and it's just a simple curve that i have brought down and you know just added a bit of an s curve like a slight s curve in there but more of the change is happening in the mid to shadow areas where i'm darkening it a lot now if you look at the other curves you can see that i'm just brightening the midtones a little bit and a little bit more towards the highlights i'm also pushing that up a little bit just because i want to add more light into those areas and afterwards what i did was just create a layer mask you know so you can see this is just my subject that has been selected and it means that all the brightening adjustments are going to affect only my subject and then all the darkening if i click on the layer mask you see that the background is white so it means that all of the darkening is going to be happening only on the backdrop moving on what i did next was just do a little bit of dodge and bend on my subject skin and also clean up the backdrop a little bit so it, there were some marks on the backdrop that i just cleaned a little bit just to make it cleaner then i have another folder here called relight so in this folder what i did was just play with dodging and burning but more focused on my subject and then i also relit it in terms of the temperature of the light i wanted to really warm it up a little bit and so i played with that inside the folder so if i just open that 
and let's start off with this for example all right so what i did first was just warm the image up and then by doing that adding a bit of warmth and also increasing the vibrance i realized that the skin was shifting more towards a yellow tone and so i created another hue adjustment layer just to push back some reds back into the skin and then i have some final layers in here what i did was pretty much just add some warmth to her lips so in this case if i just do a little before and after you will see that it just brings a little bit of warmth if you don't zoom in it will not be immediately visible to you i did that for all her lips because i noticed that when i did some of the color changes it was affecting her lips so this just brings some warmth back onto her lips again so before after before after it's just these little little things that when you pay attention to would always enhance your work right then finally i added my color grade where i cooled the shadows a little bit you know played with some greens and red tones into the mid tones and then also warmed up the highlights and this is what i have for my color grade and finally i added my noise just to put everything together and i'm pretty happy with the results i also feel like because i'm looking at how this image is looking i also actually want to explore some of these other compositions that i had just to see how those will also turn out all right so that's it for today's video if you enjoyed it leave a comment leave a like let youtube know that you enjoyed it also share it with a friend it's free and also subscribe to this channel if you haven't i'm back i'm going to be creating more content so subscribe so you don't miss out i'll catch you guys in the next one also remember to check out my website i do have some products on there that will help elevate your photography so check it out cop something to support your boys and i'll see you guys in the next video